good afternoon. Uh, my name is Dan Nemec. I'm the uh, Deputy Institute Architect here for Georgia Tech. Um, we do a lot of the master planning, visioning, capital planning, sector planning um, for the campus, for the future space, future use of, of the land here on campus. Uh, I'm going to adhere to the five Bs. Does anybody know what the five Bs are? Be brief, brother, be brief. Um, so um, get a little bit into the building itself and then get into some of the sustainability features. I would encourage you to interrupt me, ask me questions. This is not meant to be a lecture. Um, I do really think this six-minute uh, format is really cool, so hopefully we can do more of these in the future. Um, you know, Tech Square Phase 3 is really the last uh, site in the Tech Square area um, that's free of development. We have Tech Square Phase 1, which is the sort of historical, traditional buildings that are brick and tan and have sunscreens. We have a uh, data center in Coda, which is really Tech Square Phase 2. Uh, and then the last block is where we're building Tech Square Phase 3. And so that will be a 400, plus or minus 420, a uh, thousand gross square foot uh, mixed use urban infill twin tower. That's a mouthful, um, but it's going to be a really cool building. I I wish I had slides here, but they said there was no slides allowed. So uh, you'll have to email me for those. Um, so ISYE and uh, the expansion of Scheller, sort of executive MBA and graduate school will be going into the building. Uh, it, it's about 18 and 15 stories tall. Um, there'll be uh, ground level retail. There'll be a convening space, an event space at the bottom of the building um, that everyone at Georgia Tech will be able to schedule and use to convene, have symposium, have events, so on and so forth. There'll be uh, food and beverage in the retail, so very exciting. Uh, create sort of a, a presence there, an enhanced presence on the street. Um, We'll have centrally scheduled classrooms, uh, the floors above the retail, and that's really where you start to get into the, the two towers. Um, the president's vision really was to have the two towers have this sort of uh, watering hole or mixing pot. We call it the gasket in between each tower. So it looks like two towers architecturally, but it is in fact uh, have one uh, building core for elevators and two stair towers. So. Uh, it's inherently quite efficient, even though it looks and is named for two different families. Uh, double the philanthropic opportunity, right? Um, so, very impressive building. It'll have a roof terrace on the fourth level, uh, as well as the 15th level. So, our development offices are out uh, selling those spaces and getting us more money to build more things in the building. Um, that being said, you know, you have to ask yourself, is this the right thing to do, is build a huge new building in the middle of Midtown? Um, is, that, is that the sustainable thing to do? And the answer is yes. Uh, we really do need the space. Um, the quality of some of the spaces we have that we're moving people out of need uh, that sort of cycle time. Uh, folks need to move out of the space so it can be refreshed and repurposed. Uh, and we can actually do that with new space. Uh, that being said, it's in fact a very sustainable platform um, in terms of a new build. Um, many of you know the Candida building, that has an EUI of right around 19. And so most of our campus buildings average about 80 uh, in EUI, which is uh, KBTU per square foot per year. So it's really an index of the efficiency of energy use on a square foot basis across uh, a year in a building. So Candida is 19. Our new housing will be 29, and that's incredibly low for housing. Think about all the people taking showers, using the restrooms, using uh, dryers and, and washing their clothes and so on and so forth in housing. This building at 420,000 square feet will be an EUI of 24. So very efficient. It's the biggest single thing that we can do as architects and engineers um, to reduce our, our carbon emissions is to have really, really tight envelopes and really efficient buildings in terms of energy. It's energy production we don't quite control. Um, the building, um, in addition to being very efficient, uh, will have pretty low lug, uh, plug loads, excuse me, 
and it will be daylit, uh, 70% daylit, so many times the lights will not actually be on. Um, it's a very efficient window wall, um, sort of solid to uh, glazing ratio for the building, so it'll actually uh, be a very, very tight skin uh, with a, a great R value. There's not much infiltration that'll move across the envelope of the building. Um, Typical buildings uh, in this sort of class A, class B office range have an embodied carbon of 63 pounds, um, excuse me, 89 pounds, ours is 63 pounds. So we're actually uh, experimenting with the mix and the design of the concrete to get some of those really um, large carbon loads in the concrete mix design out of there. And then, um, Finally, we're actually preserving a second build site. Um, you know, we measure building sort of coverage and efficiency across campus sites um, with a tool called FAR, so floor area ratio. It's a simple division between the amount of square footage you're putting on a piece of land and the size of the land itself. So typical campus is 0.83 FAR. So we're below one. So for every square foot of campus land, we have uh, less than one square foot of building. And so this building w will be 4.9 FAR. So we're actually using the land incredibly well in terms of density. Questions? Yes. Yeah, so looking at plug loads, looking at the systems, really understanding that glazing ratio. So the more uh, solar infiltration you have, the more heat load you have in the space. The orientation of the building actually helps a lot too. So everything has been considered and optimized. So we, and Drew will uh, remember this, but when we did the living building, we had a term, it wasn't state of the art, it was state of the shelf, right? So let's get the most efficient, the most uh, bang for your buck uh, product off the shelf and use it for our building. It's easier to to buy, it's easier to operate and maintain. And so that's a, an attitude that we've kind of learned from that building and applied to others uh, going forward. So that includes TS3, our new housing, uh, and, and many of the other smaller projects like a DM Smith. So the last thing I'll mention is that, um, you know, this is a really big building. This is probably the most expensive project that Georgia Tech has done today, just because of its size. Um, but it is targeting lead platinum. So just because it's a big building doesn't mean it can't perform well. Any other questions? Thank you.